Coming up next, we have Patrick Delves. He's the Director of Sustainability and Logistics from Seismic Brewing. Welcome, Pat. How are you? Have a seat. I'm Thank good. You. How are you? Excellent, man. All right, so Seismic is uh, not brand new, but mm -hmm. a fairly new brewery in, uh, what, Santa Rosa? Santa Rosa, correct. Santa Rosa, California. Um, so you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russian River up there. Yes, sir. <laughs> good company up you, there. Yeah, you picked a great spot to be. Yeah. Um, how are things going in the first year? Honestly, uh, the response has been overwhelming so far. Uh, we're growing extremely rapidly. People are loving the beers. Uh, the, com the brewing community up there has just rolled out the red carpet for us. And yeah. it's been really cool to be a part of. Yeah. Um, now, I remember the big focus when you guys launched was mm -hmm. uh, the sustainability component, which is your area of expertise. Yes. And really reducing the amount of wastewater that mm -hmm. you guys have. Mm -hmm. And you have a whole biodigester thing going. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about what you guys are doing on the environmental side of the brewing business and how you're trying to kind of be a leader in, in that sure. space. Sure. Uh, so I'll start off with, uh, with uh, water. Uh, since you mentioned that. So uh, we've invested in some really cool technology on site. Uh, so Cambrian Innovation is a wastewater solution specialist that uh, has supplied us with, uh, uh, it's a mixture of aerobic combined with anaerobic bacteria treatment. It's a really cool little bacteria that if you give it a little bit of an electro charge, it kicks it into overdrive and they break down the organic compounds in our wastewater. Hmm. Uh, and then it goes through ultrafiltration and comes out as roughly Title 22 potable water. Wow. Um, so this is all process water, to be clear. So this is all gray water, no household waste. Um, and then we take that a step further and treat it with reverse osmosis and UV treatment. It comes out arguably cleaner than city water. Wow. We test it up against the, the city water very regularly, uh, and there's nothing in it. It's crazy. So <laughs> what do you guys use that water for? Do you bring it back into the brewing process, or do you use it in another way? Uh, so we do bring it back into the brewery and do everything just shy of brewing with it. So that's everything from uh, wash down and cleaning, steam generation, uh, rinsing, you name it. Everything, again, just shy of brewing. Only reason why we're not brewing with it is because it's kind of a regulatory gray area right now. Mm. So we brewed a couple of small batch beers with it for educational purposes. Uh, we're actually pouring one this weekend and this week. Oh, wow. Um, and really just trying to move the conversation forward and educate people and kind of remove that ick factor from people's heads. Because sure. that, that can be a really difficult thing to get over when you're talking about reclaimed water. You know. Right. Um, so do you envision a future where this is more prevalent, where, hey, we use this water once through the brewing process and we're going to use it maybe twice, maybe three times, yeah. depending upon, you know, how well the technology works and how much advancement there is? Honestly, yes. I think especially in California is really progressive uh, with, with, a, with a lot of stuff like this, uh, whether it be drought resiliency, uh, infrastructure for alternative energy. And so I think we're in a good place. And honestly, we've done this brew twice, two years in the running now. And the response that we've received has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, you know, both the people inside the brewing industry and outside are really open to this type of thing. And that's really reassuring to us. You know, we found, we did a side-by-side -side taste test last year, mm -hmm. exact same beer. One was brewed with city water, one was brewed with reclaimed water. I'd say over 70% of people preferred the reclaimed water beer. Interesting. So I think there's absolutely a market for it. How come more breweries are not experimenting with this? To be honest, the technology can, uh, it, it's a, it, it definitely is a, a big investment up front. So it's cost prohibitive. It can be right now. Okay. Uh, good news is technology is moving in a way where it's becoming smaller and also a little bit more affordable to use. So uh, the Cambrian EcoVolt that we use, we're using the miniaturized version of it. So uh, I'll give you an example, Lagunitas, Bear Republic, Brewing Company, Firestone, they all use uh, the full size unit. We're the first one to use the mini. Okay. Um, so it's uh, about a shipping container size, uh, and you're able to get the whole package there. And, and it's a much smaller footprint. And what size brewery does that work for? Like, what can it accommodate barrelage wise? So they're uh, targeting, you know, sub 50,000 barrels, so tw probably 15,000 to, to 50,000. Okay. Um, and Which is yeah. like sort of the sweet spot right now. Exactly. Um, but, I, but so our, our, the goal really for when we invested in this technology was to kind of uh, pave the way for other brewers to be able to use the same technology and kind of uh, be the guinea pig, if you will, with, with the miniaturized version of it. Yeah. Now, uh, the brewery was started by Christopher Jackson. Correct. 
son of a famous uh, winemaking family. Yes. Um, is there any influence, uh, wine influence in the beer that's being uh, produced at Seismic? Um, not entirely yet, but we are taking some pages out, out, out of the, the wine book, at least on the, from the business side of things. Okay. And I think uh, when Chris and I started this, um, we, you know, what do we want Seismic to be? Uncompromising on quality and sustainable from the ground up. And I think Chris took a lot of that from uh, the winemaking side of things. Uh, the Jackson family uh, is doing some really cool things from a sustainability perspective. and. We're uh, trying to follow in the footsteps there a little bit. So obviously on the sustainability side, that's one cue that you took from them. Uh, on the actual product side, sure. are you guys doing anything with barrels? Are you guys getting collaborative in that regard? I, I did see something the other day about a, a collaboration between um, Jackson Family Wines and another brewery, and I was actually yes. surprised that it wasn't Seismic. So uh, I guess what are your plans there to tap into you know, maybe some hybrid or sure. collaborative opportunities? Sure. Um, so I think the sky's the limit there, really. You know, we've got unparalleled access to high-quality barrels, really high-quality fruit as well. Uh, we don't have a barrel program just yet, and I think that's going to be the most natural fit for that. So uh, once we're able to dedicate a, a dedicated, like, separate sour space, barrel aging space, I think we'll probably start crossing over a little bit more. Very cool. Yeah. What's it like selling beer in wine country? It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it, it, the old adage is it takes a lot of good beer to make great wine. Yep. And that's true across the board. We're getting so much support from, uh, from the wine industry. People are really excited that, you know, we're a brewery in wine country. Yeah. Now, you guys don't have a tap room, correct? Correct. Not yet. Um, are there any plans to build one? Yes. Uh, so we're uh, currently in talks with the city of Sebastopol, which is a neighboring town of uh, Santa Rosa. Cool. Uh, we've got a space picked out and everything. Uh, working on all of our plans, working with the city right now. And if all goes accordingly, we'll have beer and glass, ideally late March, early April. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, now, how big will that space be? <coughs> and will you, will you be brewing there, or is it just a satellite tasting room? Uh, so it'll be a satellite tasting room there. Um, won't, have, won't plan to have any food or anything, but what's nice about the area is uh, we're surrounded by a bunch of local restaurants and stuff, so we can actually order out and just have somebody run and pick up the food and create more reasons for somebody to stay at the tap room. Cool. You know? And um, so that space, I'd say it's roughly three to 4,000 square feet. Oh, okay. So um, that's a pretty sizable yeah. space for just a satellite tasting room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a couple of other breweries already out there, and so we'll be uh, in good company there as well. So now the focus of that is really just to have a place for consumers to engage with the brand. I mean, it seems like you're kind of missing out on a whole lot of opportunity because people can't stay and, you know, drink beers at the brewery right now. Sure. No, and I think, uh, yeah, hindsight being 2020, uh, if we could do it all again, we'd absolutely have a tap room. But yeah. uh, I think we were so laser focused on just getting the operation up and running. Um, which I'm not sure. Have you had a chance to, to come out? I haven't had a chance. My, one of my best friends lives in Sebastopol, though. Oh, right on. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I, you know, you got to go check out Seismic down the road. You know, they're doing some good stuff. And he, uh, I think he dr actually drove over there one day and called me. He's like, they don't have a tap room. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sorry, man. I was like, well, go find their beer around town. <laughs> well, the door's always open. If we would love to have you up. <laughs> but uh, if, you're, if you can see the operation, it's, we came out swinging. You know, we're on a 60 barrel system, 60 barrel fermenters, 120 barrel fermenters, uh, 120 barrel brights. Um, so we purposely oversized everything yeah. in there with the expectation that we're going to grow into everything. Cool. You know, we're planning for efficiency and we're also planning for long term growth here. How much beer are you guys going to make this year? We're targeting six to 7,000 barrels wow. this year. And we did about, I want to say 1,500 last year. Wow. So it's, it's, it's growing. Uh, it's growing. You guys are under two years, right? Correct. I mean, that's, uh, you're like the third or fourth company that's come up here from the Bay Area really? that has had uh, tremendous growth in the first couple of years. I mean, we talked to Fort Point earlier, mm -hmm. uh, and they've just grown like a weed. Yeah. And obviously, they got the self-distribution business going. Uh, we talked to Bear Bottle, and they're going to be doing about 7,000 barrels. And you said 7, 000, about six or 7,000 uh, 7, for you. Yeah. In your, so, I mean, you guys are all sort of plodding along this same sort of growth curve. Mm -hmm. What is it about the Bay Area that's enabling you know, newer startup breweries like yourself to grow so quickly? You know, I mean, we're so close to you know, Silicon Valley and just this uh, area of entrepreneurship and just really creative outside the box thinking. It's not to say it doesn't exist anywhere else, but uh, I think what's unique about the Bay Area is it's a combination of that type of thinking, also just a perfect blending of all these different cultures and lifestyles 
coming together in one place. Yeah. And everybody is seeking something different. You yeah. Know? And I think or what we've noticed in the Bay Area is just the resurgence of, you know, these provincial styles, Kolsch, Gozo, these, all these lagers. And IPA is still king, by all means. But uh, it's really interesting to see how these, uh, you know, more sessional provincial styles are growing uh, at, compared to you know, your IPAs and your heavier beers. So cool. speaking of those styles, what's your top selling beer? Our flagship is a Shatterco, is Shatterco and IPA. Um, so we do five different beers year round. So it's Shatterco and IPA, Mega Thrust IPA, Alluvium Pilsner, Liquefaction Kolsch, and Namazu Oat Pale Ale. Okay. Um, so Shatterco and we, it's kind of outside the box a little bit. So we wanted to highlight some hops we felt like were underutilized. So the core hops there are Belma, Idaho 7, and Hollertel Blanc. Um, you know, we love our mosaics and our citras uh, and everything, but we wanted to bring something new to the table because everyone and their mothers make an IPA. Yeah. How do you stand out? Yeah. And Shattercon was our answer to that. Awesome. Well, you guys are doing some fantastic stuff, and uh, it's great to hear that you're you know, getting into that taproom space. It's such a huge piece of the business now. Um, it's great for cash flow. It's great for consumer engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're thinking, you said early spring next year is, is when it'll probably go live. If all goes accordingly with the city, let's do it. Well, fingers crossed for you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, thank you so much for Heck taking yeah, the time to thank chat you. about Seismic. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really curious to follow what you guys are doing on the sustainability side. So definitely keep us in the loop. Please do. Thanks, man. All right, man. Have a Chris, good rest of your thanks. show. Cheers.